So I want to welcome everyone to the 2018 Fall Town Hall. Um, before we get started, I want to do a couple things. First, I want to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 1 territory. The land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Cree, the Oji Cree, the Dakota and Dene peoples, and homeland of the Métis Nation. Now, we are an organization that is welcoming mindfulness. And I think we've done this sometimes. We haven't been totally consistent. But today, I would like to invite you to take about 30 seconds to just share quiet with one another and take time to arrive and to think a little bit about the fact that you're here as an organization as a whole, together as St. Amai. So we'll just take 30 seconds and then we'll get started. So, okay. um, just, we're gonna go over what to expect this afternoon. We're going to, I'm gonna talk for a little bit. We're gonna watch a video here very shortly. And then after I'm finished, we're gonna have a break. And as we've done in past town halls, there will be a live mic and Leanne's gonna carry the mic around to whoever might have a question. But also during the break, if you'd like, you can um, write down your question and hand it in. So the paper and pens are right here behind me, okay? So feel free to grab those at break time. After we take a few minutes to answer questions, today uh, the, the best part of the town hall uh, is the interviews. And we have an interview with a person we support, uh, one of our <laughs> team leaders. Welcome, Gary. Thank Welcome, you. John. And a parent, Rhonda, who's going to share a little bit of her story. So that's what's to expect for this afternoon. Now, the other thing I want to remind everybody about is it's, uh, we have flu season right now. Actually, we've already had our first experience with the flu. I had my flu shot earlier this week. And uh, I would like to invite you, for those of you who would uh, like to, uh, also a reminder, the free, flu shots are free, you know. You just go down this hall, go down past that elevator, and there's a room where um, they'll greet you right after the town hall if you'd like to get a flu shot while you're here, okay? I'm gonna get one, because I already have yeah. one. Thanks, Gary. You're welcome. John have one, too, like this, uh, after I told uh, I got a, a question asked. I, I, I told John about if I just got a flu shot at Corden at Stafford. Yeah, you did. You told me that the other day that yes, you got I a flu shot. I did tell you so. that the other day, yeah. So, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, um, we're going to cover a couple of major topics this afternoon. One is, it was about five years ago that we launched our last strategic plan in the gym together. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about that five years, but we're going to spend probably the majority of the time talking about the next five year strategic plan, which starts in January of 2019, and then will take us to the end of 2023. So just to remind everyone, the last strategic plan had four priority areas. One of them was expansion and transition. One was leadership excellence and education and communication. Those were the four priority areas that we focused on last time. Now, when we were looking back on the last five years, and we have spent some time at these town halls talking about our accomplishments, but when you actually look back at the full five years, it is pretty overwhelming. So rather than me try and explain what all of those accomplishments are. What we did is we put together about a, a six minute video that's going to run you through and we don't have absolutely every accomplishment because we, we did a, a lot in that five years. But we tried to focus on the ones that had the most impact on the people that we're ultimately here to support. So can I just invite you for the next few minutes to look at the two video screens and then we'll come back and, and talk about the next five years. I think the most significant change for St. Amand was the decision as an organization to fully embrace community. The fact that we have embraced human rights, that we have taken a strong position in advocacy, that we have worked hard in partnerships with community. We started to achieve, you know, some momental shifts in, in people's lives.
and I'm very fortunate that I get to kind of see into the background sometimes with what my team leader is doing, what my coordinator is doing, how many people have to get involved to get things done and how much they have to advocate for these individuals that we support. It is, it is really extraordinary and it's nice to see how far it goes up the chain because it's not just one person, it's like it's a complete team of people that make these things happen. The idea behind the Jordan's Principle is we're helping out in the communities until there's an organization um, that is led by First Nations that can fulfill this gap that is in our system right now. And so for St. Amont to be able to say, hey, we'll jump in, we're willing to do this temporarily until things can get up and running on your side it is fantastic. And it's something I think that not only aligns with my own personal morals and values and ethics, um, I think speaks highly for, for St. Amon itself in, in, in their direction that they want to see and, and what we believe in. We've changed the early learning program a little bit and now we're down to less hours but we're able to cut our wait list again which is really great. We're able to help more families and they're actually getting to see more of what it would be like to go to school. Having our own bedroom is very, uh, it's very good for everybody all around. We're able to put up all of her stuff, her pictures, and there's not other family pictures up. We have found that she has been going to a lot more activities. There's no place she loves it more than outside. We're grateful that people today can have that option of coming in and, and uh, you know, phoning and make a reservation and, and then they can use it and everything possible you can think of is, is there. And what I have seen over the last five years is uh, people and leaders working together closely to understand what we actually accomplish as an organization and to really embrace um, the fact that they work for St. Amant, not necessarily one of the specific program areas. And I think that has paid off uh, for our employees and I think it's been a huge um, positive in building partnerships. I am really proud of the steps that our employees have taken to embrace this organization as a whole and what it stands for. We'd just love to see where we're gonna go. I think we're doing a really good job. I think there's only, like we're growing all the time and I think that's awesome. I'm able to align my stuff and I, I feel good about my job. I feel good that, you know, some of the, the changes and the differences that we're able to make might not be on a global level right now, but we're working towards that. If things are developing and moving, so it's less of a residential place and more of a, a respite mm. and outreach place and uh, I think the administration's on the right road there. The fact that we've embraced mindfulness, uh, the fact that we really do look at people through a person-centered focus and, and then challenge ourselves to 
say, what does that mean for that person? What's the best possible way to support them in what they want to see happen in their lives? So, yeah, you should be impressed. If you wonder what we can accomplish together, I think that's just a great example. So thank you very much. The last five years have truly been transformative, as evidenced by the video. Our organization has moved from being responsive to actually being proactive from accepting the status quo to advocating for what is needed. We've built partnerships with the larger disability community to actually impact systemic change throughout uh, government and, and uh, disability system as a whole. But most importantly, we are focused on the individual person, their unique needs and outcomes. I hope you feel good about what you've accomplished. Um, I'm very proud of this organization and I'm very proud to say that I work with all of you. I'm also very excited and energized by where we're heading in the next five years. So the next five years is going to be innovative and I think ambitious. The key themes are human rights advocacy and meeting unmet needs. I talked earlier about our four priority areas from the first five years and our six priority areas for the next five years are innovation, advocacy, quality of life, workforce development, communication, and capacity building. And I believe you all have a handout, right, on your chair. And if you don't have one, there's some extra here that give you a little bit of an introduction to each of them. But what I'd like to point out is a couple things. One is we had four areas last time. We have six this time. It doesn't mean we've taken on more work. It just means that we're going to put our focus a little bit wider on these six areas. So for innovation, I want to give you some examples of what we mean when we talk about each one of these areas. So for innovation, Everybody knows that River Road Place has gone through some substantial change in the last five years. We're moving from a developmental center to a healthcare center. That we're moving from 206 residents to 115, and I think we're right around 122, 123. Some, you know, don't quote me exactly on that number. So we're getting very close. That we're gonna organize our services by kind of these areas, adult health, uh, child health and I have to say in included in those some one asked me the other day is you know we do w they know we need to do palliative care and those would be within those two areas we're going to continue on with respite and then we're doing stabilization and uh, slash kind of behavioral services for people we're already doing those but that's how we're going to articulate when when people ask us what we do what uh, the areas uh, of focus will be and through that transformation, and there's not too many in the healthcare field these days that are allowed are able to say, we're going to have the same amount of staff to serve fewer people. Now, those people that we're serving might have you know, slightly more complex needs, but we're going to be able to spend more time with them. Whether you're a nurse or one of our direct care staff, you're going to be able to have more quality time and provide a more holistic experience for people. And I don't think there's anything negative in that story. So stay tuned, we've got more information coming. We've talked about, uh, had some feedback on our leadership framework within River Road and people would like more clarity about who they report to, etc. We've taken that into consideration and we'll have more information very soon. I also wanna add that in River Road, uh, Carrie and I are gonna do a couple of town halls next week, one in the evening and one during the night, uh, early Tuesday morning. Another area under innovation is, uh, for those who work in community services, you know about the Council on Quality and, and Leadership, CQL. You know that you're right now putting the finishing touches, I think, on the What Really Matters plan. And what that is, is we're the only organization, uh, community-based organization, that is accredited for our community programs uh, in Manitoba. 
So um, we've talked here before, I've, I've mentioned that Leanne Finney, who's one of our directors, is working with all of the other disability organizations and with government to build a quality assurance framework to share some of the good news that we do here. But that being said, it doesn't mean that we're doing everything perfect at St. Amon. And that's why the What Really Matters plan speaks to the fact that are we truly doing what the people that we're here to support want us to do? So we're continually challenging ourselves. On the autism services, we all know that St. Amon is recognized, right, as an expert in autism, that for sure we're, we're really focused on providing uh, clinical services for kids, but we also have psychology services, we have uh, residential and, and uh, a whole bunch of other options for people across the lifespan. We've just never kind of really connected them all under the autism umbrella. They exist as they are right now within our organization. We also know that there are other organizations out there that would like us to take a leadership role across the province in starting a conversation about how we could better coordinate these services and how we could also um, help new families navigate what can be a very, very complex um, service system right now. And then you saw on the video that we, we talked about Jordan's principal. We've only been in it for a year and a half. We've actually got 30 staff in about 24 positions right now. We're serving 63 Indigenous communities, some of them quite remote. We haven't been to everyone yet. We're going to get there though. And we're also serving Indigenous people off reserve too. Big job. Lots of conversations going on. I had a chance the other day to meet with the Jordan's principal staff and I heard stories about a child in one of the more remote communities who hasn't been to school for a while because there's been too many barriers. We went up, we were able to work with the family and the school and the, and the child's back in school. I heard another story about a child who was, because of their disability and some of the challenging behavior that they were facing, they were on the verge of losing their foster situation and we were able to go in with our case management, our nursing, our, our psychology services and solve some problems and, and really give that support to the foster care provider and the child so that the, the home could stay together. I heard another story about a child who had not been out of their home in a long time and we, because of their behavior, they couldn't travel in the car. Our psychology services helped come up with a plan so that that child can now go in the car and leave their home. And those are just a few small examples of how we're making differences in people's lives every day. So that's innovation. The second area is advocacy. We are going to continue to advocate for wages, for better training, and for quality assurance for our direct service workers because they deserve it. And how some of the ways that we do that, and I just want to speak to the Disability Matters campaign, many of you we're there and I have to say, I was, I was talking to someone the other day and I said, one of the memories that sticks out for me in the last five years was when I was at, that, um, at the legislature when we had the Disability Matters event and I stood in the rotunda and I looked up and almost every second person there, and there was hundreds of people there that day for those who were there, was from St. Amon. It just made me feel really proud. So we've got another campaign coming up another election tied to the provincial election which will be in October 2020. We're going to be front and center along with all of the rest of the disability community so stay tuned and uh, the invitation will be there to get involved. We have the International Day for the Disabled coming up on December the 3rd. There will be an event at the Human Rights Museum. You will all be invited and we will make sure that we share uh, all of the activities that are going to happen that day. We have the Accessibilities for Manitobans Act that has been proclaimed and so part of our role right now is holding government accountable to the implementation strategy that they're supposed to and, and believe me we've been doing that, we've been participating in that and it took a fair bit of advocacy to get them kind of going on, on a couple of those issues. But in case you don't know about that act, um, we have some experts in, in our staff here so uh, feel free to bring questions forward. All of our projects in the future Anything that we do here in St. Amant will be put through a human rights lens. That's something that we heard loud and clear from our board and from our senior management when we met. And that really came out of our experience during the last five years. Um, one thing I will say is that when you do talk human rights and you can make people understand that those issues are related to human rights, you tend to get a lot further whether it's with government or funders or et cetera. 
we will help um, people advocate. Sometimes I think people assume that everybody knows how to advocate, and they don't. Like staff aren't even sure what you know. What's how? Can I do that? Can I speak out on somebody's behalf? And how far can I go? What does Saint Amant let me do? We're going to be really clear with people about what their role can be in advocacy. We're going to have our volunteers become advocates. We, we're already partnering with some family groups to, to help um, get them the resources they need to be good advocates on behalf of their, their family members. So um, the next issue or area, sorry, of priority is the quality of life. And the first issue I'm going to talk about, we, we haven't talked about loneliness here. We've acknowledged that many of the people that we support have may have family, although I have to stress some don't, but all of them have paid staff, some, all of us involved in their lives, which is really great. But the fact of the matter is we come and go. And all of us have friends in our lives that we rely on, on top of our family members. And some of us, um, and some of the people that we support don't have friends. So we would really like to help build friendships. At the center of that is the person and there they must choose uh, and, and accept the person that we might present to them as a friend and that over time um, you know one of the challenges we kind of talked about we haven't put this in stone yet but we said hey wouldn't it be really neat that at the end of the next five years that every person that we support residentially whether they be at River Road or in the community has two unpaid people in their lives and I think we saw earlier the PALS program has 58 matches right now. So is it possible? I believe it is. We have to figure out how to do that. And I just want to bring an example of the creativity and the, and the positive energy that we have in our organization. We have a couple of team leaders that took it upon themselves a little while ago, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, to have a game night at the, uh, at the board. Uh, what? What's it called? across the board. It's a, a kind of restaurant downtown where you are encouraged to play games. And they just set it up. Uh, the team leaders are, are Brandon and Lindsay. And they um, invited a whole bunch of people to come together and did speed games. Ever, they do 10 minutes at each. So you might play Connect Four for 10 minutes with someone and then you move on and you know play Jenga with somebody else. And the whole idea is that you get to know people that you, know, <laughs> you, you didn't before. And it's just a way of creating, hopefully over time, natural relationships. And I think their plan is to try and do that every kind of quarter. That kind of, that, nobody asked them to do that. But that kind of leadership creativity is, it, is just awesome. So uh, that could be a way that we could start to introduce people so that they can you know, uh, gain a friendship in the future. We're well recognized for providing awesome service. But we have a long way to go, not just St. Amant, but many uh, organizations in creating inclusive communities. Huge challenge, and we need to put effort, and we need to put plans to it, and we need to figure out how to do it better. So we're going to do that. We're also going to continue to uh, transition people from River Road to the community. I don't think that's any surprise for people, but I just want you to know that that's going to continue on in the next five-year plan. And we're going to continue to improve living spaces here. We've raised a few million dollars to do some renovations, and we need to raise quite a few million more to uh, finish the renovations within this building, and that's part of our plan. A lot of gratitude to our foundation for that. Um, under workforce development, our priorities are recruitment and retention. We have a, over 1,800 staff. There is turnover. We need to make sure that we keep up. We're growing. It's a challenge. We need to figure out what we need to do to retain staff in the future. Um, it's not like we haven't given it attention already, but we really do need to put more focus on it. We need to make sure that we have the right staff with the right skills and the right values. And we need to make sure that we're supporting a diverse workforce. The other area is improving our work culture. And we try and address some of that here at, at the town hall. We've talked about uh, examples in the past, but right now we have an opportunity, all of us, to participate in an engagement survey. And you do that online and everybody got an email. So if you haven't checked your St. Amon email, do that. And you can just go online. It takes about 20 minutes. That engagement survey tells us what you think about your work here at St. Amant and what can we do as an employer 
to make your experience more positive so that you want to stay here and continue to do great work in the future. So really encourage you to look at that. Um, the next area is communication. This will probably forever be on our strategic plan because it is so important. We have over 100 locations now that we provide service in. Many of the people uh, don't come to a, a big work site like this. They, they go to a, work in a community home, they work in another site, and they may not ever have a chance to talk to you or see you. So it's really up to our leaders to make sure those people feel connected to the larger organization. It's up to um, us to be able to share stories like we did on the video today so people understand, oh, that's what I'm connected to, that larger organization that's doing the work in those areas and that area and that area, and I'm really proud to be part of St. Amon. And we need to make sure that we tell those people's stories too. So we're gonna do that. We also need to continue to communicate externally with families. It's always a challenge. Uh, to figure out what, how, what's the best way to connect with families because they're busy, most parents are working these days, they've got ki you know, kids to look after and we invite them to a meeting and we wonder, well, how come they're not here? Probably because it's not a good time. But we still, they still need, we need, we need to figure out how to communicate. Um, we need to position ourselves as a leader in the disability community. I think we're already somewhat there. Our, our partners that we talked to during the strategic planning process, about 15 agencies out there, said you guys are a leader. You need to continue to provide leadership in the, in the community. <laughs> I think we need to also realize that the best way to do that is with humility. And that means the first thing we do in any interaction is listen. And after we listen, then we figure out how to partner and how to share what we know with the people that are asking for our support. And then capacity building is the last area of focus. And when I was preparing my notes for today, I was writing down all the areas that in the last five years I saw us really become much more competent in and organized and focused. So one of them is crisis services. We have outreach services now. Um, we have um, behavioral stabilization here now. So we've got that continuum. We're starting to figure out within the organization, we've got emergency foster for young kids. We've, we've got assessments that we're doing through psychology. Uh, some of them fairly urgent, and so they kind of fall into that crisis category. We have really good case management services through our family care, both children's and adult, through our social work. And more and more, as people are coming to St. Amont, not necessarily just for their services long-term, but could you help us could you help do an assessment to figure out what's needed? And then after you've done the assessment, could you help us navigate this really complex uh, system within Manitoba and figure out what the best resource might be for my family member? And we're getting way better at that. Um, the expansion of autism services will continue. The psychology services are under huge pressure right now. And uh, that speaks to what the needs are out in the community. I've already mentioned isolation and loneliness. You're going to keep hearing. If you get tired of me talking about it, that's okay. That's all right. I'd like you to be in the same position. Um, supported independent living. We're getting lots of referrals these days, so we're expanding there. We're getting lots of referrals for children's and adult foster services. Our complex health services were just recently launched. We know there's a huge need and for people especially who are nonverbal, who might be in pain, who might be not getting the medical services they need from their doctor to be able to access our clinic and we hope to see some good work there in the future too. So that's just a few examples of where I think we'll continue to uh, build capacity in the future. So for all of you what does this mean? What does it look like? How is it going to affect you? Our organization will support you to respond to those that are the most in need. So if you come to us and say, I've got someone who needs my help, but I'm not sure what to do, our job is to figure out that with you, to walk that walk with you. We are going to work to be more person-centered and more family-centered. We have concepts. Now the behavior needs to match the concept, and we need to do some work on that. We will use our team building skills to strengthen and develop relationships with outside of St. Amon. We're doing a good job of that already, but there's lots more that we can do. And we're going to focus on what truly is a meaningful life for the people we support. And a meaningful life means that I have lots of choice 
and it means that I have the dignity of risk in my life and we need to it's it's a, not an easy thing to do with people so we've got some learning to do and the people that we support have a lot to teach us so I'm really excited because we built a foundation where all of us are empowered to focus on quality and inclusion I know that you are inspired when you support a, a person to live their life to the fullest our senior leadership team is energized and grounded in our vision and mission I can assure you of that and as a team we're absolutely blown away by the creativity and the commitment and the passion that you use to put others before self thank you very much